This is just your basic manually operated fog machine. Uh, it's available at Walmart. This is the 2019 version. They changed it up a little bit. Uh, previous versions were all silver. However, internally it is the same. And if you're familiar with these, they are manually operated. So you either press the button to activate the fog or you can use the included remote and push the button. However, for me, that's not very useful. So I am going to convert this to a automatic fog machine using this little timer module here. So to do that, we will start by removing the outer case. Um, I've already removed the handle and the three screws on either side. And then there's just two screws on the top as well as this cap and a gasket. All right, so once that's done, we can remove the outer cover. And you're going to want to disconnect this connector from the top board. And then we can go ahead and set this aside. We actually will not be using any of these uh, electronics on the top after this conversion. So you're welcome to remove that or just leave it in place. Now that the top cover is off, it's important to note that uh, this device operates at line voltage. So for me, that's 120 volts AC. And there are a couple uh, little safety features in here, uh, starting with the main fuse from your mains in. And then there's also a little thermal cutout switch here. And then you have also another thermal switch here. So this modification will leave all of those intact. So basically the first thing uh, to do is we're gonna get rid of this connector because we will no longer need that. So just cut these wires off. And put that aside. Next thing we're gonna do is just cut this zip tie right here because we will need to get into this guy here. So get rid of that this up okay now this black and red wire um, we're actually going to use just as they are so we will just route these out of the way for now and we'll come back to those now we will have to modify a few of these connections to get power for our timing module now this is the timer i'm going to use as just something i picked up off of amazon I'll leave a link in the video description if you would like to purchase the same one. So this timer requires a few things. So you need power in, so that's 120 volts in to operate the timer itself. And then you have a ground and then you also need 120 volts in to operate the load, uh, in which case is going to, in this case, is going to be the pump. And then you also have your 120 volts out. So you'll bring power in, the power will go through the relay and then out here to the pump. The first source of power we're going to take off of this black wire right here. So this is your mains in coming through the fuse and then through the thermal fuse and then into the heater coil. So we're going to remove this spade connector and these can be a little tricky to get off. But we'll see, we can do our best here. It can be a little tight. Alrighty, there we go. And then we're actually just gonna cut this off of here because we're gonna replace it. Alrighty. Once you remove that connector, go ahead and strip the end back a little bit. We will be using this wire again. 
already, like so. Now, this wire is going to be used to provide power to the uh, coil, the heating coil, as well as to the timer. So to do that, we're going to need to add another little piece of wire. Um, this is just standard high temp wire, same as everything else in here. Uh, it does get pretty toasty in this enclosure, so make sure any wire you use is rated for high temperatures. So we are just going to basically uh, twist these together and then put a crimp spade terminal on there so that we can connect this back to the coil and then this wire will join the others at the end here going to the timer. So I'll go ahead and do that. Ready? that's crimped on there and then these are actually um, they have a little heat shrink uh, covering over them so I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that on there as well just to help hold everything in place Now that that connector has cooled off, we can go ahead and plug it back in to the heating coil here. So we'll just kind of go around. And just connect that right back in there. Make sure it gets on there good. There we go. So now we got our power back to the coil, as well as power coming out that can be used for the timer. Okay, now we have three wires coming out here. We have our constant power for the timer. We have this red wire, which is the constant power that's going to be used for the pump. And then we have the black wire that's going to actually lead to the pump. So uh, the only thing we're missing is the common. and that's where this group comes in so we're actually going to take the common off of the, this side of this little uh, switch right here and the reason we're going to do that is that will make it so that the pump will not be able to operate unless this coil is up to temperature um, if you have the pump operate with this coil not hot enough all you're going to do is pump out hot liquid out of the front of this thing instead of the fog like you want. So uh, we are going to remove this um, connector off of here. Again, these can be a little tight. So you might have to use some force. Alrighty. And once that's off, actually just going to remove it from the cable here because we only need one of these you'll see why so just cut that there and now we have our four wires that we will need for the controller so we'll bring this guy over here with the other ones and we'll come back to those later so now we just need to re-establish the link um, between this common and this terminal and we're going to do that with another little piece of high temp wire here. I put another connector on the end and we're just going to plug that into this terminal here. There we go. And once that's done, this is going to come over and meet up with these other two common wires right here. So we're going to cut off this little butt connector. 
and then we will strip these wires back and join them to this wire. Okay, now that those are crimped in, uh, we should be ready for reassembly. And now we are ready to make our connection to the timer. Um, I'm actually going to use this little um, four conductor plug here, and I'm going to just basically drill a hole somewhere around here in the back of the case uh, to have this come out, and then I will be able to um, plug a lead in that's connected to the timer. So I will do that and I will be back. I have finished installing the connector in the case. It's on the back side there. And there's what it looks like on the inside. So now it's time to you know, close this thing up and test it. So just do one final check, make sure all your connections are secure. Everything's where it's supposed to be. Alrighty. So now I'm going to get the case. And like I said, we're not going to be using this. I'm just leaving it there to fill the hole. You're welcome to take it out if you'd like. But I'm just going to put this back over here and start putting the screws back in. Once you get all the screws in, you can go ahead and tighten them down all the way. And you can put the gasket back on. And the cap. Now it's time to test it with the timer. Uh, here's the timer with the lead I installed on it. Eventually the timer will go in a case, but for testing purposes, we'll just do it like this. And this will plug right into the back here, into the connector we installed. Go ahead and screw that in. All right, now we can actually go ahead and undo this. And before we plug it into power, we are going to put some fluid in the fog fluid reservoir here.
Just going to go with a little bit since we're just testing here. That should be plenty. Alrighty, put the cap back on. Alrighty. And then once this is plugged in, you should see the timer come up. Okay, the unit has power. Now this timer is set for every 90 seconds. It will activate for four seconds. So we're just gonna go ahead and start that countdown going. So when that hits zero, you should see fog fluid come out. Now this is also, the fog machine is also heating that fluid right now. So you may see a puff every now and then. And this is another reason we left those safety mechanisms installed. So if the heating element does not heat up to a sufficient temperature before this countdown reaches zero, um, even though the relay in the timer will trigger, it will not trigger the pump because there is no power going to that relay at the moment. Okay, so the relay is triggering, but since it's not hot enough, it's not going off yet. Okay, you heard that little click. That was that little thermal switch activating. So the next time this counter hits zero, we should see some fog fluid. And there we go. So just like that, you now have a timer operated fog machine. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. And we'll let this go for one more time here, just so you can see it do it again. Alrighty, hope everyone enjoyed and uh, happy Halloween.